Welcome to the Defense and Aerospace Report. I'm Fagam Radian here at the Dubai Air Show. Our coverage here is sponsored by FLIR Systems, and we're positively honored to have with us the Honorable Ellen Lord, who is the Under Secretary of Defense for Acquisition Technology and Logistics, the last person who's going to wear that esteemed title, <laughs> at least until February, when you become Acquisition and, and Sustainment. Uh, Madam, Madam Undersecretary, thank you very much for talking to us. Absolutely, Vago. It's wonderful to be here in the UAE. Such a fabulous partnership uh, the U.S. has with the Emiratis. We're very, very pleased with our partnership working to combat um, violent extremist groups. We have wonderful basing here for U.S. And I think you saw it on the flight line. What a wonderful exhibition of U.S. power and our equipment. Um, I, uh, I have to say I'm very honored that we're the first people to talk to you. Uh, continuing a long line of interviews that we've been doing over the years at air shows, I want to ask you about your priorities. You know, you've mentioned and Secretary Mattis has talked about reform. Everyone in the secretaries has said they want to leave their institutions better uh, at the end of this uh, tenure. We're now a year into it because of a little bit of a challenges staffing up. Talk to us a little bit about what your priorities are in the job, in the job as ATNL, but what your priorities are going to be at ANS. Well, my priority is to service our customer, who's the warfighter and the COCOMs especially. So I want to make sure that we get equipment and services downrange as quickly as possible um, at the lowest cost. So what we're looking at is simplifying the acquisition system. I think Congress has given us many authorities that we haven't taken the opportunity to use. So we're going to build on all the good work done in the past and really make sure that we're very flexible and very co compliant and that we do things quickly. Um, you were uh, the chief executive of a very key business, Textron Systems, that had a reputation for investing a lot of money to be innovative. Uh, we just talked to the Scorpion guys uh, over there, and I know you're completely divorced from the company at this point. But what are some of those ideas that, for your corporate ideas, corporate approach, you're bringing to an organization that's not quite as corporate, it's different, but what are some of the ideas where you think will have traction that will drive that innovative ball forward? focus, number one. We have to pick a few things and do them very well. We have to have strong leaders. We need to attract people, develop them, and retain them. And we need to delegate and allow them to move forward. So what we want to do is be very clear on a few things and make sure we empower people to do that. What are some of the things that you want are focus areas, right? What are the things you want to focus on? I want to focus on making sure we understand priorities in terms of equipment and services. We are going to have many metrics. We have targets and we put people in charge and we measure progress on a weekly, monthly basis. So I think it's accountability. We tend sometimes in the government to give people responsibility but not the authority. We're looking at making people very clearly responsible. If you look at managing um, the budget, the acquisition budget at DOD, we have 80 seven programs that are responsible for over 90% of our spend each year. We have 87 ACAT-1 programs, so we're really looking at those PEOs um, and contracting officers to make a difference. Two very quick questions. One is a follow-up on that. Um, do you feel that um, the diminution of the status of the job is going to make your job harder when the services have more authority and power? The services are my customer, so I am delegating many programs back to them, and it's all about making the services successful. So I judge um, how well we've done by what we're doing in terms of getting the warfighter what they need. And uh, M&A, uh, merger and acquisition, there's a lot of activity that's been going on. All eyes are on you because you're one of the key voices uh, in that process to advise the secretary, but also the antitrust authorities at uh, Justice Department and Federal Trade Commission. What's the approach? What's the mindset you're taking? What do you, what do you want to do uh, with your uh, new partner, uh, Eric, uh, who's tuning, going to be at yes. Tuning? So, Great guy from McKinsey who's going to be taking on that role at uh, manufacturing and industrial base policy. Well, uh, to be successful, we need very strong leadership. So my focus initially has been getting the right people in the right positions. And Eric Tuning is a wonderful example of that with his Army background and then his industry experience. So we put strong people in the roles. We're letting them take a look um, at the battlefield, so to speak, and he will come back with recommendations that we will take under consideration. But right now, um, we are working with all companies out there. I have no preconceived notions. We'll look at each day deal on its own merits. But antitrust is important to you about whether or not there's too much consolidation in any market segment. We will always be compliant with all laws. <laughs> uh, Madam Undersecretary, thank you so very much. We really appreciate it. Thank you, it. Vago. So Best good to see you.